Good morning, everybody, and welcome to ABOR on Air and our events and our MLS Power Hour Simplifying the Data. My name is Jonathan Richards. I'm the lead trader and marketing representative here at the Austin Board of Realtors. And we have got a rock star lineup presentation for you today. But before we get started, a couple of house cleaning items that I just want to clear up for everyone. First and foremost, we are using the Zoom webinar instead of a regular Zoom meeting where you can see everybody's beautiful smiling faces. And the reason we do this is because we want to optimize the video and audio quality for our presenters this morning. So your cameras and mics are disabled, but don't worry, that doesn't mean that this is not an interactive event. You can absolutely 100% use the chat box feature inside of Zoom to ask any questions you may have or leave any comments. And we'll be sure to get to them towards the end of the program. So without further ado, to get us kicked off this morning, I want to introduce our moderator for today. He is the MLS supervisor here at the Austin Board of Realtors. I call him Mr. MLS. Please help us welcome Mr. Will Burnham. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate that warm intro. Always the warmest I uh, receive usually. So uh, well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'll make this very brief. We want to get to the material. Lots of great stuff, but just so glad to see so many of y'all online and join us. Um, I know it was a really tough week last week and really hope that you were able to, you know, keep moving forward and able to recover this week for you and yours. So we're definitely, we were definitely thinking of y'all here at ABOR, um, an actress. So uh, really nice to see everybody, you know, relatively back online and, and able to join us today and appreciate your flexibility, of course, for allowing us to move this a week. Uh, we really wanted to cover this material, so glad it worked out. Um, brief recap, simplifying the data. We're, we're here to show you just a few of the aspects of the MLS and its related tools that can help uh, build business between transactions. Uh, we know our market inventory is historically tight, so our goal today is to give you a few simple ways to harness the power of the data that you find in your MLS system. You probably poked around in plenty of times, do, do what you do in it, but um, we're hoping you learn a, a thing or two new, and, and even if it's something you've seen, kind of refresh. Um, when we say, he, Jonathan says data, I say data, uh, same thing, you know, when it, uh, when it comes down to it. Um, there's a lot of data in the system um, in a number of ways, so we want to kind of expand your horizons of what data means and what the multiple listing service that you subscribe to can do to, to give you that data and let you build your business around it. Um, We'll be moving segment to segment, about 10 to 15 minute segments, and we'll kind of, I'll introduce uh, each segment and panelists. So we're going to have a brief, you know, five, 10 minute window at the end for question and answer. Admittedly, we're not going to be able to answer all of our questions anywhere close to it, but we're going to, we're going to find what we can answer to hopefully just, you know, increase that knowledge. And, but nonetheless, those questions are really valuable for us to learn what you want to learn more about. So if we're not able to cover it today, we want to know what resources we can build, what videos we can create, um, you know, PDFs, all that fun stuff. That's what we want to build throughout the rest of this year and, and beyond um, to get you all to really get the, sim the system simplified for you all. So without further ado, he's one of our brightest MLS minds. Um, I'm going to introduce Jack Sellers, who's going to cover some market stats and maps within Matrix. Take it away, Jack. All right, thank you, Will, and uh, hello, everybody. So today we're gonna go and we're gonna focus on Matrix. Um, I'm gonna show you how to pull out some stats, do what's called a 1004, um, and then we're also gonna look at using the map and comp. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share the screen right here. So we're gonna jump right here into uh, Matrix, and we're going to uh, look at the 1004, but before we get into the 1004, let's talk a little bit about it. So what is a 1004? Uh, the 1004 stands for market conditions. It's an addendum form. And practically, it is there, guys, to help you see how many active listings were in that year. But more importantly, it's going to give you guys the absorption rate, the months of housing supply, and many more statistics. So I do want to first start off in Matrix just to remind you guys, you have a stats tab. You guys are able to come in here, and I always recommend going to customize, and you can put in any time frame you want. You can even customize this time frame, for example. So if I wanted to see, you know, what happened in January of this year, I can go down and I have a number of statistics, months of inventory, uh, close price per square foot, median. So you have all those you can pull individually, very easy. Hit months of inventory, then you can group them by, 
I would say month on this one. And then you can go ahead and put in the um, area, the subdivision, and you can pull all kinds of stuff. So um, here, right here, we'll do um, Anderson Mill, just to kind of show you. Um, and we're gonna do residential. And right here, you can just start pulling statistics and it's gonna show us right here that we had about one month of inventory uh, last uh, for uh, January. So you're able to see these in chart data form as well. Um, and you can also save these as well. But instead of pulling all these statistics, we have what's called a 1004 MC. So if you go to your search and what you're gonna do is go down to the cross property, underneath cross property, you will see 1004 MC. So that's where you can find it. Once you go ahead and click on it, I want everybody to set up their settings like this. So watch what I do. You, you never wanna touch status date. So always leave that going back a full year. We want to capture every single status. So we're gonna check all those off. And I'm gonna stick with residential and single family. Now, could I do this on leases as well? You betcha. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set my default because I don't wanna come in here every time I run this 1004 and have to check these off. So if you look over here to the right, you will notice you have a little gear. If you select that little gear right here, you will um, you can say set the currently selected search criteria to my starting default. So once you do that, you will notice that every time you come here, it will always start with this as a default. So now that we have everything checked off, all you have to simply do is go in and type in the subdivision or the area. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just go ahead and type in a subdivision always best practice to use those um, asterisks or those wild cards and I'm going to hit return. Now I'm capturing everything which is 173 properties within the last year in this subdivision. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the check all button and get in the habit of that when you're working with stats. If you come over here and check this off, you're just checking off the first 20. So I'm going to check off all. And then all you do after you check them off is you go down under actions, you go to print. This is where all your reports are, including that 1004 MC. So you'll notice that I have a 1004 summary and a detail. The summary is uh, plenty of good. The detail is just gonna show you a lot more information. What this allows you guys to do is to be the local expert and to look inside of different subdivisions or areas. And here I'm gonna get the, all the months of housing supply or months of inventory, the absorption rate. And this is how it works. It's gonna say currently going back three months, we have 1.17 months of inventory. Remember six, five to six months, is about a uh, balanced market. So if you go down towards zero, we're entering a stronger seller's market with low inventory, which is the market that we're in. So currently we have nine active listings. So the way you would read this is I have nine active listings. And if we froze time, it would take us only a little over one month to sell all nine of those active listings. And that's because our absorption rate is about seven and a half homes per month. So when you get the absorption rate, it's, all, it's just practically the total number of settled cells divided by the months, that easy. So we can see right here, we closed out 23 homes in these three months. So you'll take that 23, divide it by three months and you're gonna get 7.67. That's your absorption rate. We can see currently that the median closed price is at about $290,000 in this subdivision called Summerlin and the days on market is three days on market. So uh, stuff does not last that long. And if you look over here, um, closed price to list, we are getting about 106% over list price. So um that's that's pretty um um it, you know what you guys are seeing every day out there now to read the rest of this it's going to go back from the prior four to six months and then the prior seven to twelve so this is a three month period a three month and six months so a total of one year so what we can infer here is going into this year last time we had only 0.16 months of inventory that means uh we had two listings it would have only taken us uh 0.16 of a month to sell all of those listings so barely any time at all because 
our absorption rate is 12.8. That means we are kicking out about 13 homes a month in this subdivision. That's our absorption rate. So again, just to go over, you take that 77, the total number of settled cells, divide it by the number of months. In this case, this category is six months. 77 divided by six is 12.83. And you can see that the median close price was down last year, but with this market, it's so crazy. I think we're gonna see some different numbers. So that's the 1004 MC right there. And then you can take this, you can download it, you can print it, email it off. Um, so we're gonna go back um, and we're gonna go over here now I'm gonna go back to the results and I'm gonna show you that one more time. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna to go to search, go to cross property, hit my 1004. Oh, it looks like it did not save my settings. So we'll go ahead and check off all our statuses. I have residential and I want single family. And then we can come in here and we can look at a zip code. So let's go ahead and do 78704. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, hit enter. Again, the next step is selecting the all button. And then you just finally go down to print underneath actions. Once you go down to print, we're gonna look for that 1004 down here at the bottom. And we're gonna say print to PDF. So for 78704, let's look what we have. We currently have 1.17 months of inventory. That means we have actively 55 homes and it's only gonna take us a little over a month to sell all 55 homes. That's because our absorption rate is 47 homes per month in 04. So we just settled 141 homes in three months, divide that by three and that gives you the absorption rate. Um, we can see our price point down here is much higher than that last subdivision we looked at. And the days on market are about 14 days on market. So you can break these down, these 1004s into zip codes, into subdivisions, whatever it is. But guys, use this as a tool so that when you are speaking to your clients, you can tell them how many months of inventory, how many homes are selling per month, the absorption rate, what are the days on market, um, and what's the comparable close price. So that's the 1004 MC. All right, next thing I wanna show you guys is the map feature. So a lot of the times uh, the map I find is very underutilized. So I'm gonna go into a residential search. Once we're in this residential search guys, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go kick it over straight to the map and click on map. Once I do that, what I like to do next is if I wanna look at a particular property, I can go to jump to address right here and I can type in the address and hit enter. That's gonna place a pin marker on that property. Now what I can do is I can come over here and you will see a little layers button right there, those three little planes. Once you click on that guys, that gives you the ability to say, um, well, what neighborhood is this in? And this comes in handy when you're looking for comps. This is in the meadows of Brushy Creek. Okay, uh, what is it in a flood zone? All right, there's the FEMA overlay and we can see right here that this is yellow and it is out of any um, flood hazard area. What MLS area is this in? And I get that a lot of time guys, where can I find the MLS areas? You just go to the map and you overlay MLS areas and if you kind of go out, you'll see this is RRW for Round Rock West. And there you go. There is all of your boundaries for the MLS. All right, I'm gonna zoom back in here. And then one other thing that we have over here, a couple is you can go and say, well, what elementary school are they in? What middle school would they go to? And then you'll probably have to zoom out a little bit to see some of those and they would go to Cedar Valley Middle School. So this is just a handy tool, guys. Pop in an address, hit your overlays, and you can see the schools, the MLS, the neighborhoods, the zip codes, even congressional and groundwater districts, and if it's USDA eligible. So that comes in handy. So how could we use that to tie in when we're looking for comps, right? Well, all you have to do is we'll go back to search, and let's say we're looking for some comps in a particular area. I'm gonna go ahead and click active pending and close. You'll notice it always defaults to three months in this market. We might wanna change that. So let's go ahead and first we're gonna go and I'm gonna 
say let's look at we'll go to the map so select your active pending and closed and then i recommend going to the map putting a pin marker on that property so enter the address in the top right hit enter and then now what we can do is i like to overlay that neighborhood because remember when we're looking for comps guys we want to stay in the particular neighborhood and right here i can now use my polygon and I can go over here and I can outline this area where my comps are. You'll notice this always happens and my neighborhood goes down more, but I just can't really get to it. So what I'm going to do is show you how to come back, finish it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and zoom out just a little bit and watch. Once you draw a shape, guys, just remember you can always readjust this shape. So I'm going to just move this over. I'm going to say, come down to here, Meadows of Brushy Creek. All right. And then right there, we have our comps. I go to results and then boom, we have our comps. You can see that we have about seven closed. So if that's a little too many, what you can always do is go back to criteria. We can take that 90 days out and we can just go back 60 days and we'll go back to our results. And then we can always narrow those down by square footage. So I'm going to go ahead and sort by square footage from least to greatest, or I could do greatest to least. And that way we can narrow down our comps. And then what we can do now is we can select our comps. And I know everybody likes to go here to quick CMA, but let me show you one last tip. A little nice thing to do instead of just clicking on this quick CMA is go ahead and go back to print where we went to get our 1004. And now, instead of just giving him that quick CMA, which is the spreadsheet, right? I'm going to give him a little bit more information and I'm going to select a couple reports. I'm going to select the customer showing report, the multi map, and also the quick CMA. So I'm going to give him the quick CMA, but I'm also going to give him some more information about those properties. So this is going to be my quick CMA now that I can go and talk with the client. And instead of them just getting that spreadsheet and seeing ADOM and CDOM and a bunch of numbers, now we're going to get a little story behind it. So right here, we're going to zoom in. The first one is going to show us all of our comps. And here is the customer showing report. So now when they look at the closed price, they can look at the public remarks to see, have there been any updates, any upgrades? Um, you know, is this next to a green belt? Does it back up? And you can get a little story behind each comp. And then there's the map so they can physically see where those comps are in relation to them. And then down here, they get that quick CMA with all the numbers. And here we go. All right, I hope that was helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it back over to you, Will. Thank you so much, Jack. That was excellent material. I was even taking a few notes myself. I think I learned something there. Absolutely love the tip about the uh, the extra print job. Add on a few of those reports that are baked in there. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, we call it Power Hour for a reason. We're on to the next one here, but I, we do our, we are documenting those questions, so keep them coming. Um, great, great questions and just you know, ants, we'll get the answers uh, out there eventually. Pardon my cat there. All righty. So she stops meowing. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Albert Allen of Realty Austin, one of your peers. Awesome guy. We've loved working with him for. We're super thankful that he joined us today. He's going to show you uh, how to make a CMA in RPR, which, spoiler alert, just got updated yesterday. So we were throwing Albert uh, in the deep end a little bit here, but uh, we know he's got it. So uh, bear with him as we learn this new platform with him all together. To you, Albert. Awesome. So, um, when Will approached me for this, um, he's like, hey, are you tech savvy? I'm like, heck yeah. Um, then I got a new Mac computer. So I'm gonna ask the question that everybody asked on Zoom, can you see my screen? All right, so um, awesome. So to start off with RPR, um, just as with Jack said, and I'm gonna try to keep up with uh, Jack's enthusiasm as well as um, everyone else's, I'm a little bit more mellow guy but um, all these great resources you can find on the homepage of Actress. So the RPR button um, is here as well with a lot of great uh, information as well. So once we get in the RPR, as Will stated, they just redid the uh, platform. So if you have never been to RPR before, shame on you. Um, it's part of our membership with ABOR. It's a great tool for generating 
market reports, neighborhood reports, um, neighborhood stats, and it makes you look like a rock star. If you have been using RPR, um, you can see it's a little bit different. In RPR on the left side here, you can see that there's a toggle for residential and commercial. I'm a residential realtor, so I focus mostly on the residential side. At the top, they have different toggles for research, marketing, and reports. We're gonna focus on reports today. Um, and uh, the residential reports that, that I primarily use is the valuation workbook. This is the more comprehensive CMA. This is not a pricing strategy class. So when I do manipulate numbers, um, there's gonna be some random numbers. Proper reports um, are a quick and dirty report. Seller reports are a, a great report to use if you are doing a listing presentation. You're, it's more focused on that one particular property the neighborhood stats, um, you can make adjustments to the particular property on that one. The mini property report, um, I used this before I, I, I switched firms and I was offering the free home valuation uh, mini property report. If you have like a Facebook ad or something like that and you're telling people to get a Facebook, uh, excuse me, a, a quick property valuation, but you didn't have like a back end system that created that one. Mini Prop Report is awesome for that. They can uh, send you their requested address. You click, you put the, you click Mini Prop Report, put the address in there, and it creates like a like a two or three pager. Um, so let's start with um, doing the market report. So I'm typing in an address for property um, here in in the neighborhood. I actually was on the help desk for RPR this morning. So let me see if it's going to make me type it in. Um, looks like it's cycling. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I'm having some cycling issues. Um, so when you come in, ah, oh, there we go. Awesome. So when you come in uh, to the particular property, this is a property that's actually listed for sale on the MLS right now. It's gonna give you some great information about the property. Click through all the different photos, listing contact information. They have a valuation that is the realtor valuation model it is a computer generated model that they have. Um, the, the model has a certain confidence score. If there were uh, enough properties that they were able to grab that were in a particular geographic region, um, it would have a five star higher confidence level score. This is that quick and dirty that you're going for. More information about the property, different facts about the property and, and so on. I'm gonna skip all that, but please go through it. It's very, very detailed. Not only does it have the MLS data, it has public records information, information about mortgages and things of that nature. Another tool that they recently added, if you can see here on the right side, is a quick connect. Um, so this actually connects straight to zip form. So if you were um, doing a seller's presentation and you wanted to give them sample forms of the listing contracts, you can click it on here. And when you are in zip forms, you know you have that that um, the, the quick connect button where it uploads all the data regarding the legal property address, all the different contacts and all that. So this does that directly from there, the way it does with MLS Connect, but you can do it through RPR. So let's start with creating a CMA. Once you come in here, it's gonna ask you to uh, verify the data. So before you get in here, you're gonna want to have, um, you know, um, a little bit of history on the property. More than likely you have seen the property. Um, mine is lagging a little bit. Um, a lot of things um, as far as the different features that it has on, on different properties. The comparative analysis and the sales comparison analysis are the two analysis types that they have. The comparative analysis is very, very rudimentary. It's a slide scale, um, worse, same, and better as far as features go when you're doing price adjustments. It's super, super limited. Um, it, it's one that even when you do the scale, I think the most adjustments like 50,000. So if it was, if, if you, you know, in this market here, if you're not finding comps, um, being that limited, not probably the best one to use and not going to be one to use when you are, um, when you are trying to battle appraisal, right? Um, so we have all of that here. 
The first step you're going to do is um, edit the features. So based on what you know from public record and from the listing data here at the top and anything that you've gone through, you're going to want to adjust it. If it doesn't list it, then that's where you're going to want to make the different features. So this property here is four bedrooms. At public record, they had 3.1 baths. When you went in per the listing agent, there was four and a half baths. So um, you're gonna, it's gonna override with the with the MLS on there. If they've done any differences in square footage, you know, a lot of times they'll say uh, one square footage. They'll do floor plan graphics or something like that. It still captures the old one. You can override with the square footage. And then at the very bottom, if there were certain features like this one has a sport court, if you wanted to get super granular with it, you can actually add additional rows. Um, I'm going to go quicker through it um, than, than getting more detailed with it. Again, this is not a pricing strategy. It's more on how to use um, this tool here. All right, so the next step is going to be finding the comps. Um, so on this one here, I actually played with it before, so it's got some stuff populated. At the very top of the page, it's got the information about this particular property. So um, 51 days on the market, the original list date for this current listing here, the price, square footage, and all that. We're taking notes on that because when we're looking for our comps, obviously we want uh, geographic region first, and then size of square footage, features, quality of, of, of the home um, of that nature. This is a single family home. If it was a condo or town home, obviously um, you could toggle that. This comes in um, handy when we're looking at some of these new subdivisions. There's a lot of new sub subdivisions where they're a condo that's a freestanding condo. It looks like a single family home. A lot of realtors are adding that differently in the MLS. So if you know you're looking at one of those type of properties that's a freestanding condo and you do condo for the property types and it generates like one or two properties and you're like, wow, I know another property sold. Click on the single family one as well um, for those, and that way it picks up in that area as well. Um, we have active, pending, and closed. We know our market is different. So this one here, um, I'm not doing the math, but probably that's about a six-month kickback as far as what it has. Um, in this market, we all know in January, things ticked up 15 20% um, based on the different areas, like the information that Jack presented where he showed that in that one neighborhood in the past three months, homes have been selling for over 6% of asking price. Um, so based on, you could run a, a quick stat like that for um, maybe a month back or year end, as far as uh, you know the end of the year and, and get that, that differential as far as what the new property valuation is and, 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 and use that. So you have that there, proximity. I'm gonna leave, what it has preset. So the presets it has were beds, bath, living square square footage. Um, it had for the lot. And then if this, you know, if you had a newer construction versus uh, old construction, they also have keywords. So um, maybe casita or um, some type of special feature that you wanted to add on there, boat dock or, or whatever. Um, so you click search. It's going to bring you all the different comps, uh, similar to what Jack had, this is not neighborhood specific. It's more of, of comps with your zoomed out map. If you were getting too many comps or too few comps, you can actually zoom out and modify the search. It'll give you more. Obviously those are gonna go further than you know, a two mile radius. Um, so that's not gonna be, you know, those are, that's not gonna be helpful. Um, and then, like I said, if there's too many, you can actually zoom in and, um, and, and have more realistic uh, approach for, for what you're doing. So uh, especially like a farm and ranch or something like that, that, that feature would, would work better um, for, for, the zoom out, um, for the zoom out tool. When we're looking at the comps that have come back, it's going to have all of the sold comps first. And it's going to list by default proximity first, and then you have your other toggles. So proximity is super important in our market right now. Date is like way up there as well. The default ones when they did the automated value are also going to show up as a star. And those are going to be the ones that are labeled that use this RVM. Um, I have I reset where I scooted the camera out a bit or, or the map out a bit. So it's going to um, it's going to have a long one. So I'm going to make you dizzy real quick. So at the bottom, 
Then it's going to show the pendings and the uh, active listings on there. So obviously yours would be a lot less than this. Um, so I'm gonna scroll back to the top, make you dizzy real quick again. Um, so I pre-chose four random. They were they were closer. Um, and and um, so we're gonna use those in the valuation. When it loads up, this is where you're able to make your adjustments. So, you know, with houses, especially in most of our Austin neighborhoods, um, they're very unique. If we're along the perimeter of the city of Austin, we're going to have a lot of uh, these new construction uh, subdivisions where they may have 10, you know, seven or 10 floor plans. So um, when we're working on these valuations, there's going to be, a, there's going to be an order cert, uh, excuse me, an order. Um, all right. So now we're going to wait it. Um, so there's going to be a particular order first, second, third, fourth. I chose four. I always like to start out with a little bit more if we have them. And then as I'm going through photos and, and different um, 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 level of, 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 of remodeling and things like that, then I can whittle those down. So I always like to start out with like four or five. Um, but what I was saying as far as the subdivisions go, if you know that your subject property is the same floor plan layout as uh, one of the comps, you can actually move that toggle and switch it as, as far as the place goes. And that way, you know that that's more of an apple to apple. Um, for this particular neighborhood, we're not having that. Um, so I'm scrolling down and I'm just gonna start top to bottom. And again, the numbers are all fake. So don't critique me on, on any of those numbers. Seller finance concessions, that's what you would find in the MLS. So if they gave uh, $5,000 for repairs or anything like that, that comes off the top uh, of the property. So you'd want to add that and you, you go through for every one. For the photos, when you're clicking through the photos, this gives you a, a, a great you know, um, way of seeing what's going on, how many garages it has, the different exterior, the type of brick, um, that they've redone the flooring and, and things like that. It has a pool. The study has a, a nice built-in. For the report purposes, you're going to want to make sure that you go back to one of those beginning photos because when you create the report, whatever photo that you landed on, if it was a bathroom or something, that would be the photo that shows up in the report um, going through there. Um, at the very top, another thing I think is super important is the price per square foot. When you're making adjustments on square footage, uh, you know, uh, again, not a pricing strategy class, but if it's more than 100 square feet difference, you're going to make that adjustment. You can use your calculation on however you were taught for that one. This one's a little bit bigger, so we're going to we're going to take 25 grand off the top. We'll do the same on this one again. No, no thing. Um, we're going to call this one within 100 feet of it, but, but let's ask likely not. We're going to we're going to add um, we're going to add a ten thousand dollars on there because it's a little bit smaller so however you're going to do that same thing for bathrooms um, on there so it gets very very granular on there so this one here has three and a half baths our subject property has four and a half we're gonna this is a higher end neighborhood uh, we're gonna call that that half bath um, 75 7500 um, again all made up this one has three baths two half baths we can consider as far as valuation wise goes through there we're looking through um, all of these properties have pools. My subject property has a sport court. If you wanted to do a price valuation on that, you can. I'm going to leave it alone for right now. I, I would probably make some type of valuation if I was actually looking at this one. But you're looking on there. I would switch mine to pool no um, on there. View factors, uh, depending on the different neighborhoods you have, green belt, lake, city view, things of that nature. Super subjective. Um, pro tip, I would any any transaction you have i would ask for the appraisal report um, it's a great learning tool obviously taking a pricing strategy class is awesome as well but look and see what the appraisers do you're going to see it's very subjective but th they do have some rhyme or reason um, on that so view factors over here the, the topography and the views are, are amazing um, for the age of the home the different uh, conditions of the home so let's scroll down to the bottom um, with our market that we have right now, when I'm looking at these homes, if I had a comp that closed in 2020, I, I'm making adjustments as far as um, as um, as as far as the new normal uh, rate, right? So you're able to add 
anything that you want on here. So you can do, um, you know, market price adjustment on here, and then you'd add it. So let's say that you use uh, Jack stats and you saw that it was 6% appreciation. This year, this comp was an older comp. Um, you could do whatever math you do, however you were trained, and, and make that adjustment um, based on the sales price. Let's call it 60 grand. Um, and so now for this market using that old comp, you have it on there. Another super important tool for this one is do not back out of anything. This is probably the one sucky thing that, uh, about um, the tool is that if you don't save it, there's no automatic save. Um, so you want to update that valuation uh, before you do anything. I'm not going to do it now just because the computer's laggy. Um, here, you can you talk about all the adjustments you have. Um, subject property has you know four bedrooms. This property has three. I made adjustments for this. I made adjustments for time period. I made adjustments for whatever pool, this, this, that, or nature. Um, after you've done all of your adjustments, um, there's two ways to weight it. If it's a condo or townhome, again, this is not a pricing strategy class, but if it's more apples to apples, probably an even weighted, um, even weighted, weighted equally type of comp is probably where you want to go. If you do auto weight, it's going to be more so based on the different types of, um, of adjustments that you've made. If you've made no adjustments to a particular property, we never went to the, the fourth property, it's going to weight it higher. It's considering that you are saying that this property is more apples to apples. We made more adjustments to the first property, so it weighted it a little bit lower. If you don't agree with that in whatever you know, math and wisdom you have, you can actually change it. It says it's a little bit higher, it can fix it. It'll put it as close as it is based on that one where you're saying, I want this property to wait a certain one. Or you can tediously go through and say, no, I want that one 20% and I want this one 24% and then you can fix it yourself. But if you are just hell bent on having a particular property because you know from experience, maybe you this is your neighborhood, you'd have it. Come in, we apply, we close. You're going to get it out. Um, and um, ah, it's, it's giving me an error. So it's going to generate the report. When the report comes back, it's going to ding for you. All right, it doesn't want to let me do it. it it's going to ding for you. And what it's going to have is it's going to have the report. It's going to ask you if you want to add or keep any of the uh, RVM data. So let's say that the RVM is way off from what you had. You can suppress that. It's going to ask you if you want to add or keep the neighborhood information. So if the neighborhood is trending upwards as far as uh, sales prices goes or downward, you can keep that. It'll have school information that you can keep on there. Um, it's going to have the different trends on hey, homes are, we talked about that absorption rate. So homes are withdrawing or being on hold or expired. So when you're when you're presenting this, uh, what is the health of that particular neighborhood? And then it's going to have your cool contact information. And you can actually add uh, pages like bios and things like that. So since the thing is hanging up on me, check it out. It's on the homepage for, um, for the actress. And, um, and I'll let you guys take it from there while RPR is uh, making me look a little bad, but that's okay. Um, it's a super cool tool. It's my number one tool that I use when I'm doing um, when I'm doing my CMAs. Fantastic, thank you so much, Albert. That's uh, excellent here. Absolutely love hearing it from the agent perspective. We wanted to give that peer-to-peer -peer explanation of really here's how this can, can be used on kind of a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you, Albert. Like I said, it kind of puts you in the ringer there with an update. Um, so a couple about not seeing something. Keep in mind, they just updated this yesterday. Um, you know, as these things tend to go, lean into that RPR support channel. Like Albert was saying, he was he was working with them earlier to see if it's something there. Blake dropped that link to the Knowledge Center for um, for RPR, especially with a new platform. Definitely encourage kind of poking around in there. But just like with Jax, Alberts, and we'll see with Caroline's here in a second. Um, Later today, just go in there and try to reproduce it or, you know, do, do one thing in this platform so that knowledge stays somewhat fresh um, and just kind of practice with it. And again, there's a little thing that's a little hiccup there um, as a new platform um, with RPR in this case, 
uh, bear with it. And of course, let us know through our support channels if we need to uh, work with RPR to get that going. Um, so thank you again, Albert. Really love to hear that. That was great. Um, on to our final segment here. Um, we are going to look at Remind Pro, which is a super powerful, certainly one of our most modern um, interface and just modern tools that we have, one of our newer ones as well. Um, Caroline Mulvey with Remind is our account rep, and she is going to just show you a very quick, simple way to, but a very powerful way to get um, some farming and Remind. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Caroline, and uh, appreciate you helping us today. Of course, thank you guys so much for having me. And as Will said, we're going to do a quick campaign in Remind. I'm going to give you guys simple steps to go ahead and find new listing opportunities. So when you guys jump into your Remind account, you'll land on something called the Daily Dashboard. Today, we're going to focus our efforts on three different sections. That's going to be our search, our safe search, and our carts. Now the goal for today is gonna to be finding new listing opportunities. We're gonna be working on a campaign that Remind created called a dream home campaign. We're going off of what's going on in the local market right now where we have people maybe in homes that are a little bit smaller based on their needs in COVID right now. We have tons of people looking for homes with office spaces, a little more room and flexibility for their themselves and for their families. Uh, so we want to target people that may have purchased a property back when interest rates were uh, quite a bit higher because we have such low interest rate right now. So we can reach out to them and say, hey, are you in your dream home? Now, what Remind does is we combine uh, MLS data, public record data, third party data, and some of our own Remind data points. Now, there's a lot going on on this search page, so we're going to break down what we need to do to find those opportunities. So the first thing I'm going to identify is the area I'm looking in. I can search by neighborhood. I can search by uh, zip code. I can search by uh, a specific area. I can even draw where I'm looking. So I'm going to select a zip code I have preset for myself, and I'm going to apply that to my map, and it'll identify the area I'm looking in. Now, as I apply these filters to my map, I'd love for you guys to keep an eye on this little uh, results filter up in the upper right-hand corner. This is gonna let us know how many properties match the uh, search we're currently doing. So right now we have just under 10,000 properties in this area. The next thing I wanna do for this campaign is I wanna look at some MLS data. I wanna make sure that the properties that I'm identifying are all off market. I don't wanna reach out to anyone that's currently listed. That would be a waste of my time, my uh, marketing dollars, you know, all that good stuff. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna look at something simple like the ownership time. Now the ownership time, what I'm going to identify in today's campaign is I'm looking for anyone that purchased their home between 2006 and 2008. Now, why would I be looking at people that purchased then? Because we had some record high uh, interest rates then in comparison to our extremely low interest rates right now, it's a great way to open that conversation. So I'm looking for anyone that owned for at least 12 to 14 years. I'll apply that filter. We'll see we have about 350 results. All right, that gives us a great list to start with. Let's take it to the next level though. With your Remind Pro account, you can also identify who is owner occupant. So if you guys are doing a mailing campaign, you know you're not reaching out to any renters. That, that makes your list even cleaner. So we're looking for owner occupant. We go ahead and apply that to our map. And finally, we're going to look at the mortgage age. So this is looking at the most recent mortgage uh, associated with that property. So I'm looking for any home that hasn't refinanced since they purchased. So just like our ownership time, we're going to apply that 12 to 14 year range. We have 31 properties that match that. That's a great tight campaign for me to reach out with a very targeted message. And keep in mind, we're looking for people looking to get into their dream home. So this is an easy conversation. It's an easy first campaign for you guys to try out and remind if you haven't done one already. Now, what's the next thing I do from this page? Well, in Remind, when we wanna save a list of properties to go ahead and get a campaign started, we wanna go ahead and select those properties and put them into a cart. That is a list for me to save for any prospecting uh, I'm doing, if I wanna share any properties. In this case, we wanna to go to that list to go ahead and export, maybe print some mailing labels or even send out some mailers. So we're gonna just name this Dream Home Austin. So I'm creating that new cart and I'm adding my 31 properties. Perfect, I get a success message in the upper right-hand corner. 
Now, before I leave my search page, I'm going to go ahead and save this search. So I don't have to remember this campaign. I can come back and recycle these filters, reuse them again. I don't have to look back into my notes for how I created this. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that zip code filter. And I'm going to select that save search button in the upper right hand corner. Now this is going to save the filters and layers I've applied to give me those opportunities. So I'm going to name this search dream home campaign 2021. And I will save that search. So now I've saved those filters for me to come back to. And just to show you guys what that looks like, I'm going to go ahead and clear out these filters. I'll go down to my save search tab and we have that dream home campaign to go back in and edit and duplicate. So super easy to reproduce once you've done it once. Going back down, we're going into our carts now. And this is where we're accessing that list that we just created uh, in that zip code 78757. So we have 31 properties in this cart. Now, what can I do once I have these properties in my carts? Well, the first thing I can do is I can go ahead and just export these. Let's say I have a really advanced CRM that I love, I won't abandon, but I want this list to live in that CRM for any drip campaign or marketing campaign I'm doing. I just need to select these properties by clicking that little check mark. I click export, name my file. And then I can go ahead and choose what data points I'm exporting. Now you guys have access to over 100 different data points on each individual property, which is pretty awesome. So you can choose to go ahead and include all of those data points, or you can identify the specific data points you want included or excluded, which is super nifty. Go ahead and click export. You'll receive a notification once this export is ready. It comes to you in a CSV file. So whether you're using numbers, Excel, whatever data management system you're using, it will be ready for you. You'll get a notification at the top of your page when it's ready, as well as an alert in the bottom left hand corner. So let's say we didn't need to export our properties. Let's say we need to go ahead and just, uh, you know, get these, these uh, mailers out. Maybe I already have some marketing materials with my team ready to go. I can go ahead and just print mailing labels directly from Remind, which is nice and easy. Click the print mailing labels. We're going to select who we're campaigning to. I'm going to select the property owners because remember, we know that we're reaching out to everyone that is owner occupant. I'm going to put their property address and I'm going to choose the label type I'm using today and click print again, ready to go. Now, the final piece we have is going to be the send mailers option. So when I click send mailers, this is actually going to give me the option to build a campaign on a partnered site we have with PCM Digital. So we're going to name this Austin Dream Home. We're going to go ahead and click build mailing campaign. And it's going to bring us to a joint storefront with PCM Digital. Now, the cool thing here, it's brought those 32 properties from the campaign we just built to this page. So I already have those addresses living here. I have a four step process just to walk me through to go ahead and get this campaign out uh, for delivery. From here, I just choose a design. I go ahead and make the edits and the customizations that I want. Uh, we even have the option to go ahead and upload your own, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, your own designs or anything you may be using and just use them as a printing service really. We can go ahead, pick from here, choose any of the different formats we want. You can see we have the option to upload our own artwork here. And I'll just walk us through the storefront to make sure that those get out to your clients. Now, I will say it's not Remind that's sending out these mailers. So if you do have any questions about the storefront or any orders you may have made, they have an excellent support center just by clicking on this little button in the bottom right hand corner to go ahead and connect with them. So once we've got that ready to go and sent out, we go back into our carts and we can manage our cart from here. We can even save this to come back and review later or when you're done with a campaign, you could go ahead and delete once you've completed that process. Now, that being said, I know we went through a few steps to go ahead and get through this full workflow. I know we've gone over a ton of information in today's power hour. Uh, we do have tons of information for you on the Remind site to help you recreate campaigns like this. We have a full support center. If you click the bottom right hand corner with announcements, guided tours, webinars, an option to even chat with our support team Monday through Friday. Uh, and for this particular campaign, we actually have a blog post that walks you through step by step how to recreate 
the dream home campaign. Now, if you guys want more, uh, you know, campaigns like this, more up to date info on what we're doing at Remind to give you guys these cool types of tools, you can go ahead and even uh, subscribe to our blog to get those live updates so you can be up to date with the coolest new campaigns to do in Remind. But that is going to be our dream home campaign and finding new listing opportunities using the tools you have available to you today. And thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you so much, Caroline. That's a, that's a wow factor there. Uh, you covered an absolutely amazing way to farm and get some marketing material out there for really cost friendly too. I mean, I know that was a quote is starting from, but 31 mailers for 20 bucks and high quality, high looking um, design. That's I love that, that feature of Remind. Definitely one of my favorites that we have across our entire suite. Uh, um, big round of applause for our, our panelists. Uh, that was that was great. I can't believe an hour has passed already. I know we got a bit of a late start. Um, Want to respect y'all's time, but I got a couple of questions here uh, that I did take down. So thank you all for um, bringing that along. Jack, first for you, when you're going through the uh, 1004 MC, uh, you did add on hold and withdrawn to your statuses that you put for that, that example. I wasn't sure if you were doing that for just, hey, let me just go over A to Z here, or if there was a specific reason why we should include those statuses in running that report. Yeah, so the 1004 MC um, is going to need to capture all of the statuses. Um, I'm gonna, let me share my screen again real quick. So whenever you're doing the, the 1004 MC, we want to capture all the statuses right here, guys, um, even if it's been withdrawn, expired, closed, because at the end of the day, um, when we run this report, just remember, let's go back and um, we're going to get a bunch of data. And so that data fits into uh, select all. We're going to go down here to prints. All right. So uh, right here. <clears throat> we want to capture all the statuses because we want to see what has also closed, but you'll also notice that we have the median uh, comparable list price. So this take is this is taking to an account everything, what it was listed. It doesn't matter if it was withdrawn, expired, or whatever. That's what the median list price is. So we need that to capture that kind of data. And then, of course, closed is going to be represented right here on the closed uh, median price. But we just want to pull in all statuses. That's a great point, Jack. Yeah, absolutely. Because obviously, one that's held or withdrawn, it's not going to have a soul. So it's not going to be part of that sales data. But the list price, I think that's an excellent point that we still want to capture what was on market, even if it didn't end up closing that. Those listings, as we know, that go on and off market still tell a specific story for what that property was going through. So uh, thank you for clarifying that. that I learned that one as well. Um, I got one question for you, Albert. So, uh, Sky, I think you've had some great questions today. Um, and I think just since you're, you're an agent and showing RPR, um, her question was, when do you recommend using RPR versus um, the actress MLS property search for comps? I guess, you know, what's, how do you decide which one to use when? Yeah, absolutely. So I always use RPR when I'm doing comps. Uh, if I'm doing something super quick, like the way Jack uh, put it together, um, just to have some quick information, um, then I'll use the the quick CMA for that one. Um, the uh, if I'm helping an investor with leases, uh, quick CMA uh, for that one as well. So for the actress. But if I'm doing a, a full market analysis, be it for um, a listing appointment or for an offer, even though our offers are, hey, what do you want to offer right now versus the CMA, um, that um, I, I'm using RPR. Love it. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, I did just type a type an answer to, to Maria. Thank you for um, asking that question in Q&A. Uh, yeah, Remind requires an hour of its own. I think any of these tools, as we know and see, can, can do that. Um, we post pretty much every week, uh, Monday, called Actress Access. It's a link really to all of these tools, RPR, um, Remind, even a few other ones that are part on that dashboard there. Um, keep an eye on those. We update it through the week once a, once a webinar happens. We take it off so it doesn't clog it up there. But we try to time that for Monday so you can kind of get your week started off and say, hey, what's on the docket this week? Let me learn something new. Um, that's a really consistent you know, campaign, if you will, that we have there. So keep an eye. And then as Carolyn pointed, there's a ton of materials within the Remind platform. Um, poke around in there. And then you know we also have an internal one that, that Jack's gotten really good at Remind too, as, as he has with 
many of our MLS tools. Um, well, it's actually right at 11. So that timing um, ended up working out. If you had a question that either we weren't able to get to or you think of later, of course, I wish I thought of it then. Um, support at abor.com is always a good email. Save that one for us. That is your go-to for, hey, I have a question, I have an issue. Our staff here is, we're, we're here to help you. That's, that's, what, that's what gives us our, our drive every day to make sure you can keep moving forward in your business. So let us know through there. Um, and, you know, as we kind of put this together, love the MLS Power Hour concepts. We had simplifying the data. Maybe we go to streamline the data. Point being, let us know what you want us to, to show you as these tools. I really think there's a lot of powerful opportunity to, uh, to continue this type of formatting and training, um, you know, because obviously we have our CE credit and, and good classes there, but we want to give you quick hit stuff, um, get these live ones, be sure to use, we'll have recordings afterwards and kind of build this, build this consistently over time. So let us know what you want to hear. Um, let us know what's going to be most valuable when you poke around this tool, because just like you may learn something from us every day, we learn something from you all every day. So it's, it's really valuable to have that, that two-way street and that engagement. It's, it's what, uh, like I said, it's kind of what drives us every day to learn how you all are using this stuff. Um, anybody else have anything to add uh, before we go off? Jonathan, Jack, um, anything like I've that? I've seen oh. a couple questions about it, it, the, the, the cost. This is all free with your MLS subscription. Everything that we showed you, minus if you want, um, like Caroline was saying, if you want Remind uh, Rocket Print, who we they affiliated with, to send out the postcards, of course, they're printing, mailing, putting postage. That's the only time you would ever pay. Everything else is completely free. Yeah, as long as you keep that active MLS subscription, that Remind Pro tool is going to be usable um, to, to continue to work with that data. Um, there is gonna be a prompt, thank you, Blake, for, for keeping me honest. Uh, we really wanna know the survey from what, just like I was alluding to, take a minute to fill out that survey. That helps us be better, helps us know where we wanna go, um, how we did on this one. Um, it's really valuable feedback. So just keep an eye out for that and let us know. Um, and as Blake clarified, you'll see a prompt here shortly. Um, Jonathan, anything you wanna add? No, I, so awesome. Thank you guys, everybody. Will, fantastic job, Caroline, Jack, Albert. Guys, this is such a powerful thing and I'm so glad that you all joined us today for uh, this event. And we will definitely bring you guys another one as soon as possible to give you guys some more information to navigate this crazy market that we have right now here in Central Texas. So thank you guys all for joining us today. We appreciate it. We'll see you down the road. Stay epic and stay legendary.